incredibly successful theory. It, it is not as widely appreciated by the general culture as it should be. What an incredible achievement of, theory, of physics this has been uh, after two millennia. This theory has been tested uh, down to extraordinarily short distances of order 10 to the minus 18 centimeters. But some of my colleagues uh, work on nanophysics, branch of physics defined by size, the size being 10 to the minus 9 meters. Well, particle physics works at distances of nano, nano centimeters and tests our theories down to such distances and with extraordinary accuracy. The test of this theoretical framework, which is based on quantum mechanics and on local field theory, quantum field theory, has been tested now to, in some cases, an accuracy better than a part in a billion, which means you can both measure and calculate a number of measurable quantity, and you have to worry about the tenth decimal place. It is unbelievable feat of both experiment and theory to achieve such accuracy. But all of the components of the standard model, not just electromagnetism, including the weak and strong nuclear forces, have now been tested in dozens of cases to accuracies of much better than a percent. We also see no limitation of this theoretical model. Sometimes you construct theories, they contain within them the seeds of their own destruction. They lead to paradoxes, to problems. You know that they have to go wrong at some scale. So the only place that we know that this theory goes wrong is the so-called Planck length of 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, an incredibly short distance. This framework might explain all of physics down to that length. We see no reason why it must fail before then. And since the same theoretical structure works at the level of planets and stars and galaxies, indeed the whole universe we now describe using the standard model, particle physics and general relativity, we can say that this theoretical framework works from the Planck length to the edge of the universe at 60 orders of magnitude. On a logarithmic scale, we are halfway between the Planck length and the size of the universe. And we have one theory, one theoretical framework, that seems to be able to explain all of this. This might lead one to, uh, to conclude that after with such great success, particle physics, high energy physics, or what I call fundamental physics, the search for the basic constituents of matter, our understanding of the basic forces that act on them, is over. But of course, the very success of the standard model, our very understanding that we've achieved, uh, raises more questions, uh, or as many interesting questions that it answers. I'd like to say that the most important product of knowledge is ignorance. Not it's the kind of ignorance that leads to political strife, bigotry, racism. That's not the kind of ignorance I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ignorance that leads you to ask why questions. The ignorance that is the basis of scientific exploration. The ignorance that we cherish, informed, intelligent ignorance that uh, is based on deep understanding of what important, interesting, addressable scientific questions <coughs> are. And that ignorance requires knowledge, and the standard model has produced such wonderful ignorance, wonderful questions. Questions like why are all these forces, the forces that we observe in nature, electromagnetism, weak, strong nuclear force, all have their um, origin, we believe, in a notion of symmetry, a beautiful symmetry principle, a local symmetry called gauge invariant. Now, there are many other kinds of forces that we can imagine 